Hello and welcome to Aki Corner. This is episode number 56. And today, we will be discussing separation requirements between buildings, more specifically, separation between a building and adjacent property lines, separation between a building and another building, and finally, but not least, the fire rating requirements and opening allowances based on the separation distances provided. First, I want to clarify that there are two different things that affect the separation required between buildings. The first are zoning setbacks. The zoning code changes from city to city and county to county. The second are easements, usually utility easements. A third item to consider is the building code. The International Building Code, or IBC, is the most widely used code in the entire United States, and other countries use it as well. However, even within the USA, each state and sometimes some cities have a modified version of the IBC. Therefore, be sure to check out specifics of the city, county, and state that you live in. For clarification purposes, zoning code setbacks and utility easements simply tell you the required separation required between buildings and such setbacks or utility easements. There is not much you can do about that. You simply can't build within those setbacks or easements. As for the building code, it doesn't restrict how far a building must be away from a property line or another building. It simply states what fire ratings, walls, and openings must have depending on such distances. And in some cases, it also limits or even prohibits openings on exterior walls. Let's discuss this in more detail. Starting with the zoning code. The zoning code has different uses for each parcel of land. Zoning can affect what you use your land for, what you can build on it, how much you can build on it, and yes, they can also affect the separation required between buildings and property lines. We are talking about property line setbacks. The zoning code may have setbacks that require buildings be a certain distance away from the property line. The exact distance will vary from lot to lot, and it will also vary depending on the side of the lot. It is very common that the setback will be different for the front, rear, and side of the property. For sample purposes, I am drawing a lot with its property lines in black, and I will show the setbacks in blue. I am drawing this property line such that it has a setback of 30 feet at the front of the building, setbacks of 5 feet at the sides, and a setback of 15 feet at the rear. What this means is that you cannot build a structure within these setbacks. So I will scratch out the unbuildable areas with red. You can only build inside the blue rectangle area. In conclusion, these are the required separation distances required by zoning setbacks. As a second example, it is very possible that some properties may have what we call zero lot lines, which means that buildings are not required by zoning to keep any distance separation between the building and the property line because there are no setbacks. In other words, you are not required to have any separation between a building and a property line. Therefore, in this example, you may place a structure anywhere within the lot because there are no setbacks. Now, let's talk about easements. The most common type of easements are utility easements. These allow utility companies to install the infrastructure needed to provide buildings and communities with water, sewers, electrical power, gas, etc. There are other types of easements too, such as private easements, easements by necessity, easement opportunances, etc. You don't need to know all the different types of easements, but you need to know that if you have an easement on your property, whatever type of easement that may be, you will not be able to build on that easement. Going back to our last example, assuming there are no zoning setbacks, that doesn't mean that we are free and clear. It is possible that we may have an easement. For sample purposes, let's say that we have a 15-foot electrical power easement along the side of the property. Again, what that means is that you must keep a minimum separation of 15 feet between a new structure and the property line. You may place a structure anywhere within the lot except within an easement. Now that you know the types of separations required by zoning setbacks and easements, let's talk about the building code and how it fits into all of this. But before I get to that, 
I'd like to take a minute to ask that you hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel and share this channel with others who may like this type of content. If my videos have helped you professionally, please consider buying me a coffee or becoming my patron through Patreon. Information to all these accounts is in the video description. But back to figuring out how the building code fits into all of this. To make sure this is clear once again, the building code does not limit the distance between buildings. In fact, many buildings are built right next to each other. It does, however, provide requirements for the protection of exterior walls and their openings based on separation. By the way, when the code makes references to openings, it is normally referring to doors and windows. The building code also limits the amount of openings on exterior walls based on separation. Separation requirements can be found in the following section of the IBC. 7 section 05 and table 705.5 Note the required fire resistance rating required for walls based on their proximity to either the actual property line or the assumed property line. I will discuss this assumed property line in a minute. Be aware that there are a few footnotes that are not shown on this table, so be sure to look at the IBC for a full table, but this is sufficient to understand the basics. This chart is relatively straightforward. The column on the left Notes the distances between the building and the property line, and the other columns note the requirement for exterior wall fire rating required, which, as you can see, depends on the type of construction and occupancy group. For sample purposes, let's assume that we are to design two buildings as shown here. We will also assume that the buildings are type 3B and type 5B construction, but both will be used for office and will be constructed with the details noted here. Let's also assume that the distance between the buildings and their respective property lines is as shown here. Before I note the distance between the buildings themselves, it is important to note that IBC section 705.3 with the title buildings on the same lot state that buildings on the same lot shall be assumed to have an imaginary line between them. Therefore, we have to place an imaginary line between the buildings. It is interesting that you can place the imaginary line anywhere between the buildings. It does not have to be exactly in the middle. However, for the purposes of this example, we will assume that the distance is equal between them. Now that we have all the parameters we need, let's go through the buildings and see what fire ratings we are required to have. Starting with building A, the north and west distances are between 10 and 30 feet. Since it is a type 3B building, it falls under other for the type of construction. And since this is a B occupancy, the fire rating required for the north and west exterior walls are one hour fire rating based on separation distance. The south wall is five feet from the imaginary property line Based on type of construction and occupancy group, this would also need a one hour rating. The east wall is 35 feet away from the property line, which as you can see from the table, anything more than 30 feet away does not require any fire rating. Now we follow the same process for building B. Can you figure out what the requirements would be? Press pause and test yourself. No? You don't want to try it? Fine, you quitter. The answers are right here. Now you know how to figure out the fire ratings required in a building depending on the building's proximity to the property lines and other buildings. But how about openings? For that, we must look at table 705.8 of the IBC. A portion of it is shown here. And just like the last table, there are a lot of footnotes missing here. So please be sure to look at the actual table in the IBC. However, this should be sufficient to understand the basics. As you can see, the first column determines the distance of the building to the property line. The second column provides options for unprotected, non-sprinklered, unprotected, sprinklered, and protected. And finally, once you know the distance and type of opening protections, the third column lets us know how much percentage of the wall is allowed to have openings. So to make sense of this, 
Let's start with building A and analyze the west walls. As you can see, the distances between the building and the property line are 12 feet and 15 feet. You will also notice that the building is sprinklered, so that gives us a good chunk of information. Let's start with the first section that is 12 feet away from the property line. If we go back to the chart, the chart tells us that if a wall is between 10 to less than 15 feet, and if it is sprinklered, we are allowed to have 45% of our wall provided with unprotected openings. Even if the openings were protected, as you see here in the table, the allowed opening percentage would still be 45% of the wall. This may bring up a good question. What is the difference between unprotected and protected openings? <laughs> in short, IBC section 705.8.2 states that opening protections where required must comply with section 716. That section is a whole other count of worms that I am not gonna go into for two reasons. Reason number one, it is somewhat complicated and it would take a whole other video just to talk about that. And reason number two is that if you look at the table, it really doesn't make much of a difference when a building is sprinklered. As we noted in the earlier example, when a building is sprinklered, the difference in percentage allowance for protected openings in any building and unprotected openings in a sprinkler building are basically inexistent. The only time when it does make a difference is when you have a non-sprinklered building and you need more openings than that which is allowed by unprotected openings. I will talk about that a little more in a second, but just know that opening assemblies can have a fire rating and so can glazing. If you provide the fire ratings required per section 716 and therefore provide protected openings, you can potentially increase the percentage allowances for openings if you were working with a non-sprinkler building. Anyway, back to where we left off. We determined that this wall can have openings that take up to 45% of the wall. This means that we must think of this wall in an elevation view. So let's draw an elevation of the exterior wall. For clarity, I am going to draw both of these walls, the wall that is 12 feet away from the property line and also the wall that is 15 feet away from the property line. So here is a cryptic elevation. The section that is 12 feet away from the property line may have up to 45% of the walls provided with openings. Oh. And by the way, in case you're still wondering what we mean by openings, we're talking about doors and windows. These are considered openings. Therefore, we may have a large window as long as the area of the window does not exceed 45% of the wall area. Now that you know this, the next wall is much faster. Going back to the next wall, this wall is 15 feet away from the property line. So let's look at the table again. Per the table, if the wall is between 15 feet to less than 20 feet away and has unprotected openings, or in other words, non-fire rated openings, since this building is sprinklered, we are allowed up to 75% of openings in the wall. So that's pretty simple, right? To find out the allowed openings for the rest of the walls in the building, you would simply have to repeat this process over and over and over until you cover all the walls. And that is all guys. Now you know how to find out how far away from the property line you must stay based on zoning code setbacks and easements. You also learned how to find out if a wall has to be rated based on the distance to the property lines or adjacent buildings. And you also learned how to find out how many openings you may have in an exterior wall based on percentage. I hope you liked this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comment section. If you have not yet subscribed, please subscribe. If you know anyone who may like these types of videos, please share it with them. And if you haven't hit that like button, what are you waiting for? If you would like to support my endeavor, you may join my Patreon account or buy me a coffee. Information on these accounts is in the description of the video below. Thank you again for watching this video. I'll see you next time. But until then, this is Archie Corner signing out.